In this video, I'm gonna tell you about a perfect itinerary for four to seven days in Paris, how many days you need, which days to focus on, and where all optimize it for each region. One day you get to know a region here, another day you get to know another region and get to know all the other sites there, focusing on the coolest things to do. Tours near there, Disney, there's Disney Europe, it's close by, is it worth it? Versailles, one of the most incredible places, it's 40 minutes from there, included, not included, we put together a very nice itinerary to give you an overview of the city and help you on your trip, guys. So don't forget to give us a like, subscribe to the channel because it's really important and buckle up! Hey guys, for those who don't know me, I'm Gabriel Lorenzi, creator of the Grupo Dicas, the largest travel content network in the world, and today we're gonna talk about itineraries in Paris. This one is more focused on those days between 4 and 7 days, it will be a little more, a little less, no problem. The video is to help you understand what the tours are, how the days are divided, so you can put together the perfect itinerary for you. So let's go! Ah, uh, Gabriel, but how many days should I stay in Paris? Which is ideal? It's difficult to say an ideal amount. In my opinion, Paris deserves at least four days, at least four full days. I think five or six is ideal, but you can make the most of fewer days. If you have fewer days, all you have to do is choose directly, optimize the itinerary, and you get to know it. It's just an opinion to try to help you who are sometimes in doubt about how much time to dedicate to Paris and how much to dedicate to the other destinations. So this video will help you a lot with this itinerary. So let's start with Paris the first day, regardless of how many days you're staying, I think the most important day is the Eiffel Tower. Everyone wants to see the tower, there's no way, and sometimes people put it off until another day and get overly anxious, ah, let me try to get up there to see it, because it's so big, sometimes you can't see it for certain areas of the city, so in my opinion, on your first day in Paris, you have to kill that anxiety and see the Eiffel Tower. One tip, the best thing is to see it in the afternoon and the evening, so that you don't go to the same place two or three times, go in the late afternoon, see what time it is, getting dark, it varies a lot according to the season, but for example, if it's getting dark at 7 o'clock, 6.30, go there at 5, stay there, observe, we'll give you lots of cool tips, and at night you can see it all lit up, which is also beautiful. For this day, your first day in Paris, I think you should take a trip along the river Seine, it's the main river there in France, it practically cuts Paris in half, and the great thing about it is it's cheap, it's super pleasant, it's super beautiful, and you can already see the city. In your head you'll say, there's the Eiffel Tower, there's Notre Dame Cathedral, there's the Arc de Triomphe, you already create this map of the city of Paris in your head, and it's a very pleasant walk to do, it's super easy, super simple, then you walk around, you go down, you're near the Eiffel Tower, and then at the Eiffel Tower, here are some important tips. You can go up to the second floor, the second floor, and all the way to the top, there are several options, we've been up all of them, it's really nice, but if you're on a tight budget, you're looking to save money, I think the second floor is perfect if you can and you want to buy the top one there, then you can buy it at a time, you've been up there, the part of the tower, but the most beautiful thing about the tower, in our opinion, is that you can see it from the outside and from a distance, because sometimes people want to stand underneath and take pictures and then the pictures don't look so good, you see those very large irons, now if you see it from further away, it's much more beautiful. A nice tip, go to the Trocadero, put Trocadero on Google Maps, it's an area with a staircase, a high area in front of the tower, but right in front of it, there's the whole park in front of the tower and it's far away. From there, you get the most beautiful pictures of all. There's even a good restaurant there, like I fed the home, home uh, of house, and it has a beautiful view. I think it's nice that having dinner in the Eiffel Tower itself, try to go for brunch in the afternoon, make a reservation, it's an incredible view because the Eiffel Tower has two restaurants. I don't think it's worth it, we've been to the second floor and it wasn't that nice, it's more popular, let's put it that way. The second one's more chic, it was a nicer experience, but I'd much rather go to that other restaurant, which was incredible and the view is really beautiful. 
To go up the Eiffel Tower, you have to buy tickets. For God's sake, the Eiffel Tower, the Louvre Museum, and almost all the other tours, you'll see queues of people who didn't buy them online. That's a fact. Just Google it. Q Louvre Museum, Q Eiffel Tower, you'll see. So buy in advance. It saves us a lot of time. We go straight and it's cheaper. Buy in advance, it's much cheaper. If you want, I'll leave a link to one of our pages below in the description of the video, which has all the links organized. Where to buy the cheapest tickets, tours and excursions. In other currencies, you don't pay tax and it's a very good giant company the hotels we've stayed in highly rated cheap good value the travel sim card which one we use which one's the best the travel insurance that's mandatory for europe a comparator that finds insurance at half the price you'd find elsewhere a global digital account so you can take your euros with you to europe much cheaper than using a traditional credit card in short there are several websites for you to organize your entire trip and save a lot of money and this link already contains all the discounting links with promotions so use this page, it will help you a lot to plan your trip and save a lot you will see compared to the other places. You will see that the prices really are very good and you will pay cheaper and of course you can avoid all the queues for the most popular tours. Now we're off to our second day in Paris. The second day will be busier. The first day is a bit lighter, so you can enjoy the vibe of France, Paris, eat, go to a cafe, have dinner, see the tower, walk around, take some pictures. The second day is for getting to know a lot. So the second day always starts, in our opinion, with Notre Dame Cathedral. But it's closed because of the fire. See if it's open when you go. But even if it isn't, I think it's nice to go and see it from the outside. It's beautiful. The area is beautiful and you can start your tour from there. Nearby, you'll find uh, the Pont des Arts, which is a very beautiful, iconic bridge in Paris. As you walk along, you come to another beautiful church, the Saint-Chapelle. Saint-Chapelle, I'm not sure how it sounds in French. It's not as big or as iconic as Notre Dame Cathedral, but it's very nice too. And then you'll be at the mouth of the Louvre Museum, the largest museum in the world. You will need a lot of time to get to know it. Prepare yourself. It's really gigantic. How long do I need to visit the entire Louvre Museum? Experts say it takes at least 20 days. So focus on the areas you like best, of course, you see it more quickly, you don't have to analyze every work, but there's everything, it's an incredible museum, you have to go. And about the tickets, you need a ticket. An extra tip, the main entrance, which is in that glass pyramid, that's the most famous of all, is where people go on foot, arrive, it's very big. There is another one that's hidden away in the Louvre Carousel, those arriving by metro can get there, it's a much emptier entrance, and it will save you at least 30 minutes of travel time and it's really really amazing i think you should go there because it's really a beautiful place and guys, any questions you may have, just let me know and I'll try to help. Right now, we're getting a lot of messages, but I'm focusing here because I really like helping. So I'm doing my best to answer everyone. Anyone who wants to, even faster than here on YouTube, can add me on Instagram, at Pilotenzi, and then send me a direct message and I'll try to respond even faster. Over there, the dynamics are a little faster. I send an audio, I can respond more quickly. And take the opportunity to follow me there to see all the trips we make, our life here in the United States. Speaking of which, we have a project, a very cool new channel that we made about our family called Lorenzi family if you can watch it give us a like subscribe it's really cool we're showing all of our life here in the United States we move it to Orlando for two dollars me Livia Clarinha and Laurinha we're showing the Disney parks where we live 15 minutes from the parks all the other amusement parks the beaches the cities the whole world because we keep traveling everywhere so we've got some really cool content so if you like it give us a like follow us there and watch it I think you're gonna love it and then you leave the Louvre and stay there for three or four hours because you can't stay there for that long unless you like artwork. Then you dedicate a whole day to the Louvre. But most ordinary tourists end up spending four or five hours there. It will still be late if you've woken up early. So a good tip is to go on ahead because there's a park, some very nice gardens at the Louvre. And then you stop for a rest in the Toulouse Garden. Toulouse, I'm not sure how to pronounce it in French. This is one of the most beautiful gardens in France. You can walk around, take pictures, it's very nice. And now I'm going to give you two options. If you're still in the mood, because the Louvre Museum is big, it depends on how long you're staying there, you can still walk along the Champs-Élysées, which is the main avenue in Paris and has beautiful stores, popular stores like Zara, H&M for you to shop. It's the most iconic avenue in Paris. You can go straight on and you come to it after the square, this garden, you can walk there and get to know the Arc de Triomphe. You can do it at night. It's a beautiful street. It's super cool. But if you're tired, you can put it off until the next day 
until the third day of your trip, it's up to you, but you can do it. If you're up for it, you can keep going and do it all on the second day. Of course, it's going to depend if you have the time, if you're tired, but you have many places to go, many beautiful places, so you can go straight from their garden, it's good. And on the third day in Paris, I'm going to give you a slightly different tip from what everyone else gives. They give some more tourist attractions, museums that are nice in Paris, but there are two tours that I think you could include there. One of the other, if you're passionate about Disney, have never been to Disney and have the dream, there's Disney Paris, there's the Disneyland Park, and there's the Walt Disney Studios Park, which is really cool. I recommend Disneyland the most, which is the main one with the castle. It's 45 minutes from Paris, so if it's your dream, if you want to go, I think it's worth it. If you haven't yet, come to Orlando, to the United States, or even those who have have and love Disney, it's really nice, really cool, there's a subway, there's a transfer, it's super close, there's this website for tickets, it's the cheapest of all, we always buy our tickets there, check it out, everything is ready, it's a nice ride, and if you don't like Disney, you don't want to include Disney in your itinerary, the Palace of Versailles, do the round trip to the palace there, in my opinion, it was one of the most beautiful tours in the whole of Europe, it's sensational, it's very beautiful, and it's very close by, it's an hour's drive, you get there, there's a ready-made tour with a guide and everyone explains it to you there's also this tour on the website I told you about we did it they pick you up from your hotel take you there it's super comfortable the place is wonderful from the photos and videos you can already get a sense of it so it's really really an amazing experience guys so you decide what it's better for you if you like Disney go to Disney if not go to Versailles and that's it guys, it's a bit of a rush, but you can do it. I'm now going to make videos of more days, itineraries of 5 to 7 days at Disney. No, Disney, it's just that I have Disney on my mind all the time, for God's sake. In Paris, 5 to 7 days in Paris. And we're also going to do many mixed itineraries. Paris with Lisbon, Paris with Italy, several itineraries that you can mix destination in Europe. It's going to be very cool. Now let's move on to the fourth day in Paris, if you have four days you can do Disney more easily and the museum can also be done in just one day, you have to do one each day because it takes up almost the whole day, I'll leave the two as one day for you to choose from but you can try to fit them in, on the fourth day I would go straight to the Palais Garnier which is a beautiful place, the building from the outside, the architecture, the painting is very cool, it's there that they inspired the production of Fenty of the Opera which has a very cool story, buy a ticket, it's not expensive, visiting site it's really nice and then you go to the church of Madeline which is another unmissable tourist attraction it's close by it's not that difficult to get to and the area you're going to be in is really nice there are lots of restaurants get on Google Maps do some research see which one is closest there are lots of nice little restaurants and that's what Paris is all about so stop in a cafe try to get a table on the street or those with a little window on the street have some crepes this French cuisine is delicious you have to try the crepes, the meats are very good, and the macarons. I'll give you a tip for a macaron place, but there are plenty of nice macarons for you to eat. That's a fine sweet, you see there. It's very light, it's very good, but it's part of the trip to Paris. Don't come back without trying these two items, for God's sake, because this is really the essence of French cuisine. After lunch, take a break because you're going to have a good walk, it's a little further away and there's a staircase which is nothing more and nothing less than the Sacré Coeur. You see people from all over the world there, each pronouncing it in a different way, it's an incredible place and the best thing about it is that apart from the cathedral which is beautiful, the basilica is really beautiful, you have a stupendous view of Paris, it's a very high place, very remote, so it's very nice. It will take up some of your time in the afternoon but I think it's very nice, it's a place worth visiting a lot of people go there from all over the world, it's really nice to take some pictures. On the fifth day in Paris, you discover more of the city's cool cultural sites, including the Pantheon. It's an incredible place, I love its architecture, its grandeur, it's very cool, you have to visit. After it, you can go on because it's close by, it's a place with lots of works, lots of things for you to see. The Saint George Pompidou, which is a very cool place too, it's an incredible place. There are lots of works, lots of things for you to visit, it has a lot of works. It's more contemporary works, it's at the top, 
there's a restaurant with a very nice view. There is an outdoor area with an escalator that goes up to the top floor. There's a restaurant and a cafe next door. And there's also an area where you can stay. It's worth going up there. And if you're hungry and it's lunchtime, take the opportunity to eat there as the restaurant is very good. We had lunch there. The food was very good. It was quick. After this tour, I'd say either go to the Luxembourg Gardens, which I think are very beautiful, but it's not that big. You get to know it in an hour's walk, but it's very beautiful, a very beautiful garden. I think you have to see it. Or you could take it out and include Gallery Lafayette directly, which would be like a shopping mall for us who are used to this type of shopping center. It's a gigantic store, which is a giant mall with seven or eight floors with all the brand stores you can imagine, luxury and cheap brands. So if you want to buy, you have to visit. And even if you don't want to, you have to visit it because it's an exceptional thing. The decorations, when it's Christmas, everything they put up inside, when it's other times of the year, it's sensational. I really like it there. Even for just walking around, it's a very beautiful place. There are good restaurants inside. And upstairs, I think it was on the 5th or 6th floor, there's a kiosk selling only macarons, which is the suite I mentioned. So it's a very nice thing to go there, have some coffee, eat something, but it's a place for those who want to shop. For general shopping, the Champs-Élysées is the place to be with all the stores. Zara, a very good Zara. Mango is also very nice. And inside the Gallery de Lafayette, there's also a more chic version of a very beautiful place. It's a place that's really worth visiting. For the sixth day, I think it's a good idea to include a bit more of a museum if you want to get to know the works, the history of Europe in general, and the world. That's a very nice museum, the Musée d'Orsay, which is huge, not as big as the Louvre, but almost one of the biggest in Europe. It's very cool. There are lots of works by famous artists like Van Gogh and Monet. There are lots of cool things to visit. The area is beautiful, the view from it, it's right on the river, it's really nice to see it. After that, you can continue to the nearby palace of Fontainebleau. Very beautiful, one of the largest in all of France. It's very iconic. It has been home to more than 30 French monarchs and has been the scene of several events that have marked French history. So it's a nice place to visit. It's more from the outside to take pictures. You don't have to go in or anything, but it's very nice to pass by. And in the evening, try to explore the city, go for dinner somewhere nice, take another restaurant near the Eiffel Tower. The Latin Quarter is also very cool. It's a Latin neighborhood with food from all over the world. More focus on the Latin public, but there is also the Italian part, which is very cool. There are several neighborhoods, so try to explore this part of the street a bit more, walk around, grab a coffee, a restaurant, because that's what Paris is all about. It's about walking around, finding the coolest places and stopping for a bite to eat, a refreshment and a rest too, because it gets really tiring. Walking around all these attractions can be really tiring. Ah, and where to stay? What's the best area? Paris is big, unlike the Rome we talk about. Oh, stay in the tourist center, Prague too. Paris is big. It has the roundments, which is our, the neighborhoods, as they call them. You have to know where to stay. We have a video explaining where you can stay. If you'd like below the link in the description, I'll also leave you a personalized map of the best area, in our opinion, with the hotel we stayed in. It was very close to the Eiffel Tower and close to everything. It was a perfect location. Check it out. Staying there, you optimize your time to go to all these other tourist spots you can get to a lot of things on foot there are many things you can't but you can also take an uber it's really easy you don't even need to communicate just put your address down there's no problem of not speaking french or anything you don't need to communicate with the person nowadays it's easier because everything's digital and the subway works too anyone who wants to try the metro we use it it's two or three times and it works very well it's a bit cramped to be honest the smell is heavy it was both spain france the subway i don't know what's in that subway the people the smell is strong whoa Sao Paulo is a luxury next to the subway there but it works the metro really works and you can use that as a mean of transportation around France and on the seventh day, I always like to do this when there are many days. I'll leave the last one free for you to include something else. In my opinion, it's always good to leave a free day. And why? It's just doing things. Oh, I didn't get to see it there. I didn't get to see it here. You put it off until the last day. You repeat some nice place, some region. I want to do more shopping. I didn't buy what I wanted. Back to the Champs-Élysées. Back to the Galleries Lafayette. I want some cheaper stores. Go to some stores. So I'm going to leave this seventh day free. So you don't get stuck with a very tight itinerary. This is is a nice tip it helps us a lot when we try to make some decisions 
But if you want to do everything, put remember that the third day was Versailles or Disney, then do a Disney day and do Versailles, which in my opinion are two incredible tours. I would definitely include it in my seven day Paris itinerary, guys. They are both amazing destinations for you to have some fun. And that's it guys, I hope you liked the video, if you like it, please don't forget to give us a like and subscribe to the channel because it really helps us a lot. And don't forget to check out the other videos that will appear here, which will really help you plan your trip to Paris and throughout the whole Europe. So thank you very much guys and have nice trips.